Happy Saturday night, everybody. It's Saturday night, and it's the weekend, which is like any other night to me. But I thought I need to go th through these packages. <laughs> Today I was trying to figure out what in the world am I going I am going to have to move some stuff to the bedroom. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, first of all, my name is Billy. I'm the Crafty Floridian. I live in South, South Florida. I um, am retired. I'm just months away from my 80th birthday. And, hey, I slept all day. I got not I just I have days um where my body just stops. And yesterday was a busy day. I went to the uh cardiologist. Everything looks great. My surgery looks good. Um my EKG looked good. No AFib. Everything was on on track. Um we talked about uh you know sometimes when you have these ablations done I can't say that right for the first time too um, done on it, in, you know they go inside your heart and zap all those things that are causing your AFib uh, sometimes you can go off Aliquis so I discussed that with because Aliquis is really expensive and if you go off if you hit that donut hole I know a lot of us senior citizens, you know, that are on Medicare. When you hit that donut hole, you have to pay like full price. And full price is like, I think it was $500 a month for 30. No, for 60. For 60, because you have to take two a day. So um, I discussed it with my cardiologist and she and I discussed it, and we came to the decision that I will stay on Eloquist because of my high risk for strokes. So I will stay on the Eloquist. And my doctors, both of my cardiologists and my um, regular internist, Dr. Nair, they are helping me um, get through the, these months where... Um, so that I don't have to worry about the finances of, but she, you know, the cardiologist, anytime you're in a financial bind like that, just let me know and we'll help you as much as we can. And they did, and I brought them home, and so I got some pills. To, so maybe I have enough to get me through um, probably almost to the end of the year, maybe till November, October or November. So that makes me happy. Now, the purpose of my visit this evening was not the date. It's This is not a date now. Don't get excited. You know, Saturday night is date night. And uh, we're not having a date here. we got things that we got to do tonight. Um, I want to say I cannot, I, I didn't imagine that I would get so many squares. But they're coming in and they're beautiful. But I think I, I, I want to express to you that are planning to send me squares that I'm collecting squares for a Pacific, Pacific, Pacific anyway, for an, an exact um, holidays. And that's Christmas and the colors and, it, you know, little even decals. If you want to make little um, things for me to sew on there, that would be great. Or you can sew them on your own um, squares. But it's Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, and Halloween. Those are the three um, holidays that I'm collecting for. Um, I'm getting a lot of miscellaneous colors that are kind of out of that wheelhouse. So um, I just wanted to just refresh your memory so that you would remember that those are the three holidays that I'm collecting for is St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, and Halloween. So um, I've been getting some really nice stuff in and in fact I finished one last night and then I, 
I've got uh, two more, a Halloween one and a Christmas one on the board. So, um, and I lay them all out. I have to design what colors. Sometimes it, it doesn't work out exactly right, but we get it done. So first of all, I want to show you the two blankets that I finished this week. It's been a rough week. Um, I had terrible, well, I guess you know that, the, the water intrusion in my bed, uh, living room and the craft room they came in during that storm then I had water coming in through the pan underneath the uh, water heater and my water heater is fine my air condition is fine it's something to do with uh, the ups I have two floors above me and something happened but it took them five days to resolve it the guy that knew how to do it wasn't here. He was called over, but they don't communicate. They don't write things down. In other words, if you if you if you had a system where you have and, and I it lived in a place like this before, that you make a notation. You, you you bring in a piece of paper, you make a notation on what they did, just to take a minute and say, Hey, listen. But So we do the best we can. So it's very, um, it's very humid in here, and um, I'm swelling. I have edema, and I showed that to my um, my cardiologist yesterday, and she wants to make sure that I keep my atomizer close by, and um, we worked out something with the medication to help get rid of this edema because it's so damp in here. I'm just like swell. I'm swollen anyway, but this way, you know, this is something that's causing it. So, anyway, so we got those issues. Everything is still looks like terrible. Uh, it's to a point now that I'm beginning to wonder if maybe I just, ah, just the, but I think they should, I think they should move me to another apartment that hasn't had water intrusion. And I want to be on the ground floor. I want a two bedroom and they will have to move me. Because I can't afford it, but I don't think I should have to live like this. So anyway, that's all I'm saying. Okay, now that is off the that's off the table. I don't want to hear any any comments about it. I know what I got. I've done what I have to do. It is in, everything is in writing. I actually when I put in when I put in the memo to the administration, I actually made a screenshot of it. Because I found out that they don't keep the history of maintenance. So when you put in a complaint or whatever, there's no history. It's gone. They delete it. Because they don't want anybody to see it. It has to be. And I'm sure they don't print it out. There's no way to print it out. But I took a screenshot. So I have it. And I'm going to do that from now on. Okay. That's the end of that. Now, uh, let's get to... Oh, me personally, what I have, you probably wonder, what is Billy working on besides those blankets? Well, doesn't leave much time for anything. But I am making the cat meow. The cat's meow blanket. That's its blanket right here. And you see it, there's, it's a shadow of each other. See, there's the, the white in this color. Now, I'm doing it in two solid colors. Um, it's it's really easy, but I did have a problem at the beginning on laying down, uh, picking up the other yarn to get it to know which to to know which stitch it is that should. Be. Anyway, and I, I thought about frogging it, but you know what? It's towards the end. Nobody's gonna look at it. So you know, kids don't care unless uh, as long as it keeps it's pretty and. Anyway, it's sort of a burnt orange and a white. I, the white is in memory of Abby. So this is my Cat's Meow Abby blanket. And it's for the kids. So if you want to um, if you, if you want to get involved with doing the Cat's Meow, I can't remember. I think it's on Annie's. And if you go to Laura from Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming, she has all that information for you. Okay? 
So that's all. That's really all that I've been. No, I shouldn't say that. I've been making. Oop, oop, damn it, dolls. Uh, I had some order. I have some orders for some damn it dolls. So I got those done. I had to stay out of here because it was such a mess. And that brown stuff that was coming in the windows got all over my machine. My so I had to come in here and clean it up. But I had to wait a couple of days. So um, I'm a little behind. I've got orders, some orders cut, and I have to answer some emails that I got on some requests, which I will do. I just sometimes my mind doesn't doesn't um, register. In other words, I'll start something and then I'll think, oh, I better go get that. And I'll get up from here and go over there. And I, two hours later, I come back and say, oh, what was I doing in here anyway? And I'll start something new. Trying to keep the water up. Okay, so I made two blankets. One's a Christmas one. And let's see. So you can see it's just... See, there's that pretty one I put right in the center. And I gathered up these, these, these right here. Put, and then I got some more in after I'd done this blanket. So, yes, I, I did, I did, I did. I don't know, somebody, whoever made these, got this wonderful smell. And it's like it puts me in a trance while I'm doing this. Mm, it smells so good. So this, uh, nothing uh, nothing unusual about, I did, because it's so busy, I just went and did a, um, a granny square border. And that's all I did on this one. So this is another Christmas. Then I put together a Halloween one. I got these decals, and I think I showed them to you, what, uh, previously. Maybe it was this week or last week. And so I sewed them on to some squares, and I made this one. You see the horseshoe and the hat, and then I sewed on the, randomly sewed on some uh, four-leaf clovers. And then <laughs> there's the. The dude in the middle, four leaf clover, leprechaun hat, the leprechauns, and then this, these two leprechauns, I put on yellow, and here we go, and then, I think there's a leprechaun on the bottom, oops, let me get it up, there, or I can't, I, I go back, there we go. Another one on the yellow there. And then the border, what I did on the border here is I did like picots to show like three leaf clovers. So I did three in a row and then I put a gap. That's hard. You can't see that here. Can you? So I put three little, and then I put a gap and then I put three more. So I did that all the way around. So yeah, so that was that was fun to do. So we gave it a nice little board. I went around and did um was it a double crochet? I did a double crochet and then the next round is when I made the little three leaf clovers. So that was my St. Pat I hadn't made one in a while. I have don't have that many. So I counted, um, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before, I showed 39, 39 blankets. So now I have a good 41. No, 42, because I, I showed you one the other day. So, but it starts anew. It starts anew. So I got 39, and then we start with these. And there's one over here that's laying here now that I showed you the other night. Put these over there. Okie dokie. Now, let's get down to the mail that we got. Okie dokie. Now, let me see. Um, right now. This might be a little bit... Uh, 
Uh-oh. Uh oh. I know I've lost. Who did this? Alright, wait a minute now. I'm getting confused. Alright. This is from Diana from North Carolina. And she says, hope these squares find you festy, find you festy and feeling better. The cat coaster is for you. Thank you for all your work bringing on the squares to get to the blankets of Rocky Creek. Well, if you want to make 2025 2, you know, all the help we can get, right? She made me a little cat coaster. Here, this is the front. Isn't that cute? Thank you so much. You wouldn't be offended if I put it on one of the Boggy Creek blankets, would you, for the Halloween? You wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. That would mean a lot to me to put it on the Halloween one. And she sent some little snowflakes and stuff. Well, maybe that is eyes. I don't know. That's cool. I don't know. That's cool. Oh, and here's a little... Oh, this is to put on the blanket. Yeah, baby. I can do that. Oh, cool idea. So, the little, I don't know. It's plastic. I don't know. I don't know. I've got to think about that. You know, I don't want the kid. I don't know what, you know, what age group the kid. Anyway, I'll work something out. I'll think about it. But thank you so much, Diana. And she sent um, Christmas. Oh, what do you see this? Oh, this is so cute. Oh, my gosh. I see what you mean. I see what you did. Well, I don't think that'd be a problem with this. I see. Okay, look. Isn't that cute? Oh, I see what you did. Oh, how cute. What a, and these are buttons. What a, what a great idea. Look at this. It's got baby Jesus, the angels. There's Mary and Joseph and the sheep and the donkey or the ass or whatever. And there's an angel. Oh, isn't that cute? I see what you did. There. Well, that now it makes sense. Okay. And, of course, I have some that I could put this on another. And here's a reindeer. Cute. And here's a little girl. Isn't that cute? That is so cute. I love this. What a superb idea. I love it. Oh, Diana, this is so cute. I love it. I just love it. But I'm in, I'm in the, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to put this aside before I show you these. I don't know where that came from. I try to be careful. I might have thrown the, I've been trying, I've been got so many boxes. I'm trying to get rid of the boxes. Now this came from Louisiana. And we have, I'll be honest with you, I needed some red. These are all red, solid red. Now, you're sending me so many solids, I need some, I need some not so solid. Now, I got a whole thing of orange and a whole thing of green. And a whole thing of weight. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you from Louisiana. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Coverton, Louisiana. Wow. That's a lot. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness gracious. I got to figure out where that blanket and stuff came. I'll show it to you anyway. But let me get through this. Now, I haven't been through these. All right. This is from Toledo, Ohio. And it's from, I think that's Gay or Gail. She writes so pretty. We'll be sending more of the yarn in red and white for Christmas for your next week for your video. Miss seeing you all the time. Have a great week, Gail. It's Gail from Ohio. And she sent me a whole, oh, look at Sparkle Gray. I got a whole stack of Sparkle Gray. Thank you, thank you. This is going to work out well because I've got some sparkles. That does have different colors, and, and one of the colors is gray. It won't be a Christmas one, but it'll be a nice one. Thank you so much, Gail. That is so nice. And then, still puzzle. I don't know how I missed that. Oh, and here's another one. Some more gray. This, this is from Gail also. And this is, uh, oh, I love this, Caron uh, Simply Sauce. So we have, a, well, we got enough with, oh, God, I just, yeah, I've got another another blanket already in mine. i got the squares to go with the gray. Thank you so much. I like Simply Sauce. It, it's a, a thin four. I pulled this bag out of its box. Still confused. Still confused. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at back here. Boy, we got some colors here. Look at this. See, I'm telling you, does there's that's pink and green. Aren't they pretty? Pink and green. And then here's some more colorful ones. She's got a safety pin between each one. Then we got, I, I, oh, here we go. And here's some, these are nice, these are thick. Billy, I hope the granny skirts can be used. I enjoy your videos. I hope you're feeling better. I am. And this is from Tina Atkins. Tina. I love you, Tina. And we got some red. You see how we use the solid colors to go with colors like this? This is like uh, blue and red. And these are like, oh, like a, see those? I use these safety pins when I put my bags together. So thank you for the safety pins. Yellow. In fact, yesterday, after the cardiologist visit, I went to Walmart to have the oil change in my car. So I had, they said it'd take a couple hours. And I said, well, if you give me a, if you find me a cart, I'll, um, I'll do a little shopping. I did real little shopping, about $30 worth, I think it was. Well, that's all I had. So I got um, this bright yellow um, yarn. There was only two there. So I got two of them. And because I was getting, yeah, yellow squares in and um, I'm sorry I was just looking at this in okay looking at this square now there's something that's not off I'm trying one thing you can do when just to check yourself is to count how many little granny clusters you have. I'm not counting the corners. There's four here, and then there's four there, and then here there's five. 
So what I will do is um, I will find out where it's where it's sewn in, and then I'll take and re redo it. But I still use it. Don't worry, I still use it. But I'm just saying that's one of the ways that you can go back and count over to make sure if it seems a little out of whack. This one does. That's the one I just showed you. Are all of them like that? Just two of them. Okay, this one's good. Okay, thank you. And then we have, ooh, we got a gray. Hey, this will go with the gray ones we just got. Yeah, baby. Put that over there. Looks like these were done with like five, five, six weight, five weight, something. Here we got some blue. And I do have some blue ones also that I'll be matching. Ooh, look at these hot pink ones, baby. Hot pink and navy blue. My goodness, never ending. Some more pinky. Pinky. These. My favorite colors, blue and green. Love those. Love that color combination. And these. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And camouflage. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Diana. And I got a, a free trash bag. To take all those pins out. A free trash bag, too. <laughs> I'm betting. Okay, now these I got yesterday, and I just zipped them open. They're a little hard. This is from Donna from Georgia. I'm sending items in two boxes because this is the only size I had. I know that feeling. So thank, thankful to see you made it through the recent storm and your health is improving. And create items to send to you for Boggy Creek, Donna Cooper from Georgia. Thank you so much, Donna. I appreciate it. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at this. We got some pumpkins. Isn't that cute? Very nice. Thank you. That's St. Abby. I mean, St. Patrick. You know what? Let's see. I'm going to go. I see orange, so I'm going to go. These are orange, white, we got black and white, orange and black, Halloween colors. I'll put that with the Halloween. I'm just looking through and she's got them all. And then these, boy, I, got, I need white. Oh, I got lots of white this time. Whole stack of white. And here's some more of these. I've got some more of these too. This, this, this is the... Um, green, red, and white for Christmas, and and I just, I got a blanket, but they, oh, I might have to, I, I don't know if I've got it, oop, 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 I might have to rearrange my Christmas one, because I can use these there instead, because I ran out of them, oh boy, and I got some green, that looks dark, it must be my lighting, there's that better here we go so that's green and then we got we have some red green and red design got some more white and we have some more orange and some purple And she said a second box. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Amen. These are from Donna also. I've never contributed to Boggy Creek before, but I saw your channel and felt this is what I wanted to do. 
I love crochet and I love giving to a worthy cause. And I hope the items I made will be a compliment to your beautiful blankets. May you be blessed today, Donna from Georgia. Thank you, Donna. Absolutely. They will definitely be blessed. In fact, I'm moving some of my foggy creep stuff into my bedroom. <laughs> uh -huh. I have white. That's more white. Oh, I got the yellow. I got yellow. That, this looks like the color I got at Walmart yesterday. There were only two, so I got both of them. Ooh. And we got black, yellow, and green. That's pretty cool. Okay. And now we got some gold. Good, great for Chris for the Christmas ones. And I do have some some appliques that I. Oh, I think I got some more appliques. I didn't even see those. I don't know. I got some more green, black, and purple. This, I, I get so excited. Oh my gosh, look at these guys. Look at these. Okay, we got some. We got some skeletons. <laughs> Aren't they cute? Look at those. I have a whole box dedicated to, to these. And it's so neat because then I I know I I ah oh, it's cute. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. What are these to put on the skeletons? A little skirt for the skeleton. What what is this? Tell me. Somebody tell me. No, that's not for them. Here's the pumpkins. We got pumpkins. She made some pumpkins. Now these are not, is this a rain? I don't know. Is this a rainbow? Looks like a skirt. Um, Donna, you got to tell me what, Donna, you got to tell me what this is. It's, I probably know, but I don't know. Oh, I love them. And another bag. Another bag. Oh, let's see. The pot of gold. Look at this. The pot of gold. And look at that. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That is so cool. That is so cool. Oh, Donna, I love them. Oh, here. Here's one she put on her. See how she did that? Yeah, you can't put it on black, and you don't want to put it on gold. You want to put it on a color that will show it. I'd even put one on green. I guess this is what this is. is is um like a rainbow, you know, with the pot of gold. <gasps> Where's my pot of gold? No, I guess you could put it pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Something like, I don't know. This is going to be fun. Ah, ah, I love it. Pot of gold. Rainbows. I'm sure there's, oh my gosh. How can I, maybe it goes, no, it'll go here. Pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Oh, my goodness. I think that's what that is. Thank you so much, Donna. I love it, love it, love it. Love it. Now, I'll show you. I can't. And I'm going to apologize because I I must have I must have left something out. I don't know. Tack on it. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five. I got these six sparkly. Now, see, now that's sparkly red. It's a pretty red. But you, maybe, here you can see them. And she sent a complete blanket. I just don't remember. 
must have lost. I think it was. Dag on it. Where's my shoe? What y'all do with my shoe? <laughs> she sent this beautiful um, Christmas blanket. Please tell me who sent this. I'm a, I missed something. I must have. I don't know if, if it was in a box and I threw the box away. But I didn't. It didn't have a card or anything because I would have put it with it. So it's a Christmas blanket. Is that pretty? And here's the other side. So we will put that with my blankets. And please put in the comments who sent this. I must have, because I'm trying to keep the boxes um, broken down so I can take them to the dumpster. And I must have taken the box and not realized, because that's the only place I would have had your information or where you came from or something. But let me know. I appreciate it. But you will go with my other ones, and I will show that on a Wednesday night when they're ready for me to show some more. Um, and I think that's about it. I'm working on some, some, um, some requests from people and, uh, but I didn't get that much done. So now I, I have a stop to work with. Aren't that cool? Aren't that cool? See, I love the stuff. Oh, these little Halloween. And I have a Halloween one too. And I'm also going to do a Halloween one with like purples, colors of purple and stuff like that. So this would even be pretty on a purple, I think, here. Well, that's pretty big, isn't it? I don't know. Well, it'd have to be on by itself, I guess. I don't know what it is. Unless it's a rainbow. It could be a rainbow. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. You guys are smarter than I am, that's for sure. So, so what's going on in your world tonight? Just taking it easy. It's a weekend. For a lot of people that work, but you know, Saturday night, every night Saturday night in my world. It used to not to be. Saturday night was always, well, I used to play a lot of bridge. And there was this other couple, they lived in, when I lived in Virginia, and they lived out in the boonies. And we would switch places, um, fix dinner, and then uh, play bridge all night long, sometimes until the sun went up. And that's how much we loved playing bridge. My girlfriend, Karen, and I would pay this couple. Well, we figured out, it took us a while, but we figured out that they uh, spent a lot of time figuring out how to beat us. I think they they um, they had their own bidding system going, so you didn't know what in the heck was going on. And we're bidding our cards, right? They're bidding, you know, like if you had uh, one no trump, instead of saying one no trump, you say one um, one club or something like that, and but it was their system. So it threw us all off, you know. But we did win a few. We won a lot, um, Karen and I. But we would. We would drink coffee and um, have snacks and play bridge all night long. And then we'd go home Sunday morning and sleep all day. <laughs> oh, those were the days. It was so much fun. So I used to do that on Saturday night. And then I used to cook a dinner and have, you know, different uh, friends over for dinner at my house and try to make it bridge people so that we play bridge afterwards. But sometimes it wasn't. And, you know, we just sit in the living room on the floor and on the couch and visit and talk. That's before, um, before the daggone phones. That's when people actually sat and talked to each other all night without grabbing the phone to see what the messages are. 
So those days are far and few between. <clears throat> I mean, I can remember. Now, this is going way back. So it would be 75 years ago, something like that. I remember five. I was about five. No, further than that, maybe three years, three or four years old. And the only phone in this little town called Aiton, North Carolina, was at the, um, was at the, uh, so this was in the 40s, was at the uh, 1940s. I was born in 45, so that was World War, end of World War, uh, before the end of the war. So, um, the only one that had a phone was the sheriff or the police department. They were the only ones that had a phone. Because I remember um, one day the policeman comes up and he says, uh, my father's name was Thurman. Thurman. My mother's name was Elaine. And he cop came up or the police officer came up and he said, Thurman, you've got a, a phone call from a lady at the, at the sheriff's department. And so he took off with the sheriff and went down there and came back. And he said, uh, it turned out, I don't know what he said, but because I was too young, but I just remember um, gathering up in the car and we drove to Raleigh, North Carolina. And it turned out my father had a younger sister that was in the orphanage with her and she was adopted. Well, she found my dad. And so my dad was in his twenties and she was in her twenties. She was younger. She was three years younger than my dad. And uh, from what I understand, she got on the phone, phone call was saying uh, Thurman Mills. And he said, yes, ma'am. He says, I think you're my long lost brother. <laughs> and, uh, and they were, they looked exactly alike. In fact, when we got to Raleigh, this is what my cousin remembers. And she's two, three years older than I am. She said, there was a knock on the door. She went and opened the door. And uh, it was my dad. And she said, Mama, there's a man at the door that looks just like you. <laughs> so they were close all their, you know, all their life. And uh, there were other brothers and sisters, but they weren't put in an orphanage, just my my father. And this would have been, he was six years old. He's, so it was 1920, 1925. He's born in 1919. So it's sort of like doing the Depression. And from what I understand, the other kids were able to work and my mother, I mean, my father and my aunt were too young. They were six and three. So she took them to an orphanage. Said she'd come back for them, but she never did. My father was sent to, um, was in an, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, he wasn't adopted, but he had a, a family that took him in. And he was with them, I don't know how long. But he, you know, my father, he he was he was good with his, he had big hands. Big hands, big fingers. He had big, manly hands. And he was a mechanic. And he could build things and make things and take things apart. He could do anything with his hands. And um, he wasn't well educated. I mean, he didn't. Go, he didn't finish high school or go to college or anything. And this was back in the 20s when things were really rough. So, um, yeah, so he married my mother in 1943. And uh, I was born in 45. I was number one of eight children. And there's almost 20 years difference or 19, 20 years difference between me and my youngest brother. There's eight of us, four, five boys and three girls. And we've lost three boys. There are two boys left and they live in North Carolina. And I have two sisters that live here in Sarasota. So that's the group. 
I have no children, never been married. I guess I was the smart one of the group, or not. <laughs> Love to have had grandchildren, though. I've adopted a few, but that's the way it goes. So that's my tale for the night. Why am I talking to you guys? I guess because I haven't talked to anybody all day. And uh, I'm just running off at the mouth. And here it is, a crochet channel. Jeez. And I don't have any funny sayings or anything, any words of wisdom. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll end my videos with a word of wisdom. And, but the only people that even watch my show are, are 64 and over. So, um, they're already wise. <laughs> And, oh, my gosh. So, you know, I can't think of anything more. All I can tell you is enjoy and do what you want to do if you can while you're young. And I mean young, like even in your 50s and 60s. Uh, once the 70s come along, things start to um, wear out. <laughs> So you try to get them replaced. <laughs> you try to get overhauls, but you know, it's still it's still weary. So but be happy for God's sake, be happy. Laugh and stay out. Keep your face out of those phones. You're never going to have relationships if you don't keep out of those phones. Talk to people. Listen to what they say. That's where you're going to learn. Get your get your knowledge on the streets, as I would say. You know, you don't, uh, I don't know, it's kind of sad to sit in a restaurant and you see four young people sitting at a table. And this happened to me. And, uh, and I'm watching them. They never said a word to each other. They're sitting there on their phones. And the waitress comes up and do you think they'd lift their head to say hello to the waitress? No, they just said, I don't have this. Uh, no, no, no. That was it. And then they're back on their phone. So, you know, words of wise, stay out of that phone and learn about people and relationships. That's what's important. The phone might go away, but people don't. Or some of them don't. Sometimes you have long, long friendships that just disappear. And then you get to a point that um, you always feel like you're the one that's always reaching out and they don't reach out to you. So I've decided I can't reach out anymore. I don't have the energy for it or the stamina because it's so disappointing when they don't reach back. So we just, it's life, I guess. Different strokes for different folks. Well, I think I've taken up enough of your Saturday night. So if y'all don't mind, I think I'm going to um, clear my table off here. I'm still tired. Whew, wore, out, wore me out yesterday. One outing. But let me tell you this. From this surgery that I had, my breathing is better. A little bit better. And she told me yesterday I'll even get better over the next four to five months. But um, I haven't had the pain that I used to have in my legs. If I had a busy day like I had yesterday, walking and, uh, you know, in and out of the car and bending and all that stuff, usually that night my legs would just hurt like heck and they would turn red and burn. Well, guess what? They haven't done that yet. Keep your fingers crossed that that doesn't happen so that I can get uh, get things done. Oh, I did want to say, and probably a lot of people have already shut down, shut me down already, shut me down. I do have one more spot for the house. Uh, I'll note I have one definite and then one that's going to let me know on Monday because I had three spots. One to let me know Monday, and then I have another spot. So if anyone's interested, please let me know. I think I'm going to ask some, a couple of the girls that have um, – if they will ask people on their channel, if they'd be interested, and they can also email me. 
So uh, if you're interested, let me know, and I could send you the information. It's October the 19th through the 26th. Um, it's getting down to the D-Day, which is the 20th, I think, of this month, where I have to put in the last payment. So anyway, I just just, just about took up a whole hour of your time. I'm sorry about that, guys. But, um, oh, it was so good. And I know, I know, I know. When are you going to get off, Billy? I was just going to say, it was so good to see, see, see Debbie. I've talked with her, but I haven't really seen her. So it was good to see see one of her videos out, like it was Chevy. Chevy put a video out. It's good to see all my old friends back, back in the, back in the saddle again, <laughs> as we say, back in the saddle again. So um, anyway, if you know anybody, let me know. And uh, uh, what else I was going to say? I'm not good at remembering things, but I do want to say something. Sometimes I reach out to people that I think that maybe there's something that I make or something that I do or something that I can send them or give to them or whatever to make them feel a little better. Not about themselves, but to something that will put a little smile on their face or something like that. I'm not looking for recognition on their channels or anything like that. But I think that um, I know when I get things, I try to thank people on my channel because I, I really don't care who who I talk about or anything like that or not talk about. That's just the way I am. This is my channel, and I do it my way. Well, I do it the way that is easiest for me because I can't remember a lot of things. But I do remember when someone reaches out and thanks me. Yeah. It doesn't take much. Um, you know, an email. They don't have to speak to me. They can send me an email or something. Say, I received your, your kind gift. Thank you. I don't want to be recognized on anybody's channel. I don't care. I just would like a thank you. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't even have to say your name. Just say thank you. That's it. But I think that um, it's discouraging to to reach out to some of the larger channels that you identify with if they're having an issue with something and you want to just cheer them up. Um, I don't want my name on the video or anything like that, but I just think a little thank you would be nice. So anyway, that's all I got to say. I'm just, just, I'm just saying that I probably lose a hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. I don't have, I don't have a close to a hundred thousand and I won't live enough. I won't live long enough. Probably to even get 10,000. <laughs> and I really don't care because I love all of my subscribers that I have now and that I will have in the future. So, yeah, it's just, um, it's just me. That's it. Just me. And I love my girls and I love all of you guys. And seeing your name pop up every month, every week, or, you know, on all my comments just uh, warms my heart. But I would like it if um, if if the, if you would subscribe and maybe just um, if you look, but just subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. You don't have to do anything. Just subscribe. Um, I and listen. Maybe if you go if you go out to dinner or something, put my channel in front for a little bit. I I I really want to. Um, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, spending some money on getting yarn and stuff. And I never buy yarn particularly, but uh, I did the other day. But anyway, that's that's come here, come Heather. But anyway, it would be nice to just to build up a little a little stash on the side. But anyway, what am I saying? Where's my Abby? Abby usually keeps me straight. 
usually she'll come in and tell me it's time to shut up. I guess she's mad at me because I threw her out of the chair so that I could, you know, I have to, she, she actually bit me yesterday because I had to get her out of my chair. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, you think cats are sweet? No. Uh-uh. Or worse than dogs. Bad dogs, not good dogs. Okay, everybody. I love you all. I will see you. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you sometime next week. Bye.